Good afternoon, everyone. Let me just make sure my YouTube is muted so that it doesn't make a crazy feedback echo to me. No, I'm muted. I managed to prepare nicely. Okay, so the topic of today is year 12, well, year 13 secrets for year 12 students. So it's designed for year 13 students, uh, year 12 students moving into year 13. Year 13 students, more than welcome. There's going to be some interactivity. I'm going to ask you some questions and you can share some of your experience to help out uh, some of those year 12s who are probably in a bit of a panic because you have had very little or no teaching over the last couple of months due to the world craziness that's going on. Okay, so exam boards, who's this for? Those of you who are joining right now, you can help me out in the chat because these are the recurring questions. What exam boards is this for? I'm going to be covering AQA, OCR and Edexcel, although what I am saying is broadly speaking true for all of the A-level biology specs, even the weird and wonderful ones that I've never seen before, because there are some crazy ones out there. But the broad, broad spectrum, the core exam boards, it's going to be pretty relevant to you. I'm not going to delve into such specifics that I'm going to rule anyone out. How long is it going to last? It's going to be around about half an hour. I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet and get the, maybe save a bit of time for a Q&A at the end. Uh, those of you who want to get in touch with me, that I'm going to show you how you can do that so that if you don't get any questions answered, you can ask me questions directly inside my course. I'm going to show you how you can demo that. Hi, Megan. Hi, Holly. Hi, Emily. I want you to be super interactive and engage with me today because I, I, it's nice to talk to people. I've been in isolation for months, as I'm sure we all have. It's nice to have some interactivity. Um, okay. Yeah, okay, so it's on YouTube Live, so it will, the recording with the chat will be there basically forevermore. So it will be there. So just don't worry, Holly, come back to the YouTube channel. That's where all of our YouTube um, videos and playlists and all that stuff to help A-level students in biology, chemistry, maths. I'll also let you know if you're watching this and you do biology, uh, you do chemistry or maths as well, Ronnie has done uh, the year 13 secrets for year 12 students for maths and Rich W has also done the same for chemistry. So check those out if you are interested to get some more inside secrets there. I'm also going to copy a link because I'm going to be referring to some stuff inside our courses. And if you don't have our courses, I'm just going to share the link to the free trial. And if any of you want to copy this and chuck it in there, because there will be students no doubt saying, how do I get in there? and How do I view it all? So that's the link right there. What I think I'll do is just do super duper quickly is share my screen and just, um, oh, what my shortcut for that? Yeah, share my screen and just show you what it looks like so you can run through it quickly. So this is the Taylor Tudor's website, the link to this page I've just put in the chat. This is the biology page. Obviously you want chemistry or maths, it's just there. Um, there's a big orange button right here. You can, if you're, if you're not quite sure you trust me well enough yet to go inside there, you can look a little video of what it looks to be inside the course. You can see what some other students have said about it, the FAQs, but essentially pick your exam board. Everything we do is exam board specific. So there's different courses for your different exam boards. Do this, fill in your form here, and then we'll send you an email with a link to the free trial. So it's pretty straightforward. That's all you got to do. So if you want to try out any of the stuff I'm talking about today, that's where it is. It's seven days. You can try it out. You can ask me questions inside that course when you've got that. So if you've got any questions for me after this, just join the free trial and, and ask me questions there. Hello, everyone. Okay, so I'm going to start with a question. So in fact, let me know in the chat, are you year 12 or year 13? I'm expecting a bit of a mix, but it'd be interesting for me to see. So year 12, year 13. I want to know. Oh, I've been yabbering a lot today. I've just done my like one to one lessons. Mostly, in fact, I haven't got a single year 13. No year 13s. I need some help from year 13s here. Okay, well, not to worry. I can beat all of the year 13s. It is my job after all. Well, look, look at this. I was not expecting, I was expecting a couple of year 13s at the very least. Okay. You will still know some of the answers to this question. I want to know what makes A-level biology difficult? That's open question to all of you. Obviously, those in year 12 will be have a good idea that you're, you're kind of halfway through at this point. In fact, you're more than halfway through. Content, amount of content, amount of content, ditto, boom, boom, boom. Specificity of the mark scheme, Megan, that's on my list. 
So we've got specificity to my scheme. I've, I've hit that one. So much content, I've got that. Depth of detail. And there's one, no doubt, actually, it's because there's no year 13s here. I wrote a list of three. Let me share my screen and like, uh, okay, application, definitely. Okay, I, I'm gonna add application to this, which, which comes back to content, but I'm just gonna call this application which ties into my content. But I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you what I had written down in advance. In fairness, I've, written, I've added applications. So that I didn't have written down in oh, that, that Windows giant. So let's make that a little bit smaller. Everyone seeing this okay? Voila, okay, great. So in order that I put it down, I put number one, so much content. Yeah, the OCR textbook, 707, 706 pages or something. Are you joking? Are you joking? Is my response to that. I kind of understand because they had to write the textbooks before the spec was published and they like to include all these extra bits and pieces. There is a, I reckon I could chop that book in half and reduce the amount of, oh, you're not seeing my Zoom. Interesting. What is going on here? Oh, that is super crazy. I'm going to stop my screen share because you're not seeing it. What's happening there? If I do that, wait for the mega delay. Let's just see if that does it. I'm using two screens. I have a feeling it's when I moved from one screen to the other. Okay, that looks like it's working. Okay, boom. That was strange. I've actually, I use Zoom every single week and I've never seen that happen before. Okay, so, so much content. 700 pages, like, eight, like, joke, joke. But the good news is, and I go through some of the solutions to this as well and how you can basically get it. Well, not some of them, there's no escape. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and pretend I can click my fingers and make it all go away. But there are th some things we can do to make it a lot more straightforward. And I'm going to come back to the content. Second, that you didn't get, I was expect the year 13s to get this because they'll have done way more for past paper practices. And you can know the content really well. I'm not going to say perfectly because you'll see why in a minute. You can know the content really well, be very confident, and then you can read a question and have no idea what you need to write down. Who? Just give me a yes or a no if you've done a past paper and you've experienced that. In biology, I'm specifically talking about biology papers right now. Just a yes or a no to like reading the question and being like, like, I know this topic. I've got, and you look at the mark scheme, it's like, I know all of those points but I didn't know to write those things down because I didn't know the question. Okay, so this is a major problem with A-level biology, major problem. Um, you, specific, you said they're so specific was your language, the specific, specificity of the mark scheme. This is another giant problem. And then application, this is basically another way of saying content knowledge, because the way that you are expecting to learn content and the way that the exam test content is not the same. I'm gonna call this 1B <laughs> and this one 1A, because they are kind of the same problem. Everyone with me? Okay, where to solve these problems? Well, what did I put on the next slide? I can't remember. Okay. Content. This is the, I'm going to just draw your attention here. This is the AS student. This is what you've done so far in learning biology content. It's like a food chain. You learn topic one and do the biological molecules. And then you take your mindset and you go, okay, topic two. And then you do topic two. And then you do, okay, we finished that one. We'll do topic three. And you do transport across membranes. But it doesn't work like that when you get to a level it isn't just linear topics that are separated from each other and they work in isolation it's like a food web it all interlinks this is where that application comes from you can't just do a topic forget about it do a topic forget about it because it all stacks on top ocr called the early modules this stuff foundations of biology and it's actually a really good way of thinking about it it is Except foundations, it kind of goes on top, whereas it's much more of a food web and it all links together. So this is a much better analogy. And I've just drawn a couple of topics out there, some that came to my head. So like respiration and photosynthesis, obviously you've got 
carbon dioxide going one direction or the other side, direction glucose into CO2 and the other way around. You've got the biological membrane. So all of the electron transport chain is going along membranes and movement across membranes by, are they going by diffusion or active transport, facilitated diffusion, the organelles, you've got the mitochondria, you've got the chloroplast, everything links to everything else. So if you just try to do topic one, topic two, topic three, when you get to the end, like at the end of year 13, you've just finished your gene tech and you've forgotten all of this because you've not gone back and looked at it. You'd be like, oh, but I actually need to know that and my exam's next week. And you can't do any of that linking. This takes practice and time. So what can you do about it? Make sure you understand each topic before moving on because you will use it again. There are a few minor exceptions and my next slide is gonna show you that. But if you don't understand a topic at the time, don't just stick it under the carpet and think, hope that doesn't come up because not only might there be questions on it, there might be questions that relate to it that you cannot answer without understanding. Classics are meiosis, students never spend it. It's one of the few sections in my course where I, I spend a bit more time and detail than the spec requires. Nearly always, you'll see with me, I will cut all the content away that I can. And meiosis is one of the few places where I go into a tiny bit more because if you don't get it, all of inheritance is a disaster. You just, you can forget trying to understand inheritance unless you understand meiosis. So that is a, just a good example of where it's super important to get the foundations correct. Next thing on my list here, I'll go back to my screen share and hope it doesn't wig out on me again. No, 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 no. Oh, I think, oh no, it's doing it on the right screen. So we're, it's just, I just resized it. I'm going to just wait to see whether YouTube can handle it. Can you handle it, YouTube? Yeah, you can. Next one is use the summer to fill any gaps in your AS knowledge. So if you kind of know, oh, when I did the immune system and I just didn't get it, then don't start your A-level stuff and start trying to pile things on top of a weak foundation because it will collapse and it will, burying your head in the sand is only going to lead to worse grades, basically. That's the, the there's no escaping filling them gaps. In fact, the immune system is not the best example because on my next slide, okay, this is I'm kind of pleased with this one. What does this mean? I can hear you asking. Yeah, Ronnie, shut up about maths. This is biology. I don't talk about biology in your lessons. Okay, so these are the eight major AS topics. So we've got carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, enzymes. I split them because they're so important. DNA and RNA, water, ATP and ions, cells and organelles, transport across membranes, immune system, mass transport, mitosis, meiosis, genetic diversity, taxonomy and biodiversity. Are you with me? Yeah. These bars correspond to how much A-level content sort of depends upon this knowledge. So this is a list of AS topics in order of importance based upon how much you're going to use them next year. So if your proteins and enzymes is weak, then first thing you need to go and do is understand protein structure and how that the tertiary structure is affected by internal bonding. Because you will, yeah, immune system, I'm not, okay, this is not a list of overall year one in priorities. If you were doing the AS exam, this bar chart would not look the same. This is a bar chart of, I didn't write a title, Psh, losing marks for me already. I'm telling you the title. This is how much overlap there is between these topics and year two topics. So immune system, it's a bit of a dead end in terms of there isn't anything that directly stacks on top of immune system that you're gonna develop next year. But protein, Obviously, antibodies, antigens, monoclonal antibodies, all that kind of stuff will, but that is a protein question, not a monoclonal antibody question in my mind, because that's the core foundational understanding that you need in order to answer the question and to apply your knowledge. So you can see transport across membranes. If you don't know, or oh, this is a charged particle, how does it get across a membrane? If you don't know that's facilitated diffusion through a, a channel protein, that's basic knowledge that they will expect you just to have in year two and if you don't you're gonna it's gonna make that application all the more difficult so does that make some sense so that will just give you an idea it's i did this based upon what's in my head which is 
probably one of the most accurate sources of information out there because I've done thousands of past papers, but it's there's no scale. It is just relative. But I'm telling you that transport cross membranes are central, proteins and enzymes are central, meiosis, because all of the inheritance stacks on top of that and all the speciation and adaptation, selection pressures, all of that stacks on top of there. DNA, all the gene technology stacks on top of that. The cells and organelles, you need to, that's sort of fragmented where that's involved, but that pops in in lots of different places. And then, yeah, obviously the other things are dead ends to some extent. Any questions about this? I'm talking a lot. How long have we done? 15 minutes, I need to get a move on. Okay. This is my bombshell for here. There is no such thing as perfect content knowledge. I'm just going to let that sit with you for a second. That first sentence here, there is no such thing as perfect content knowledge. It doesn't happen in A-level biology. And what you'll be used to in maybe GCSE or other subjects is that you can you kind of want to be perfect before you get to doing past papers and before you start really sort of applying yourself to tests. Catastrophically bad idea in A-level biology. That's a game plan for disaster, but very, very, very common. I'm not saying that it's, yeah, it's, it's I, I understand, but it's not a good plan. The exam is only one third to 40% recall, less than 40% for A-level for sure. And you will never feel 100% ready. And you won't ever feel 100% ready for the exam because you will never get 100% on the biology exam, not one. And FYI, neither will your teachers. Not a single thing. Was the colors of any significance, Megan? Just that I ranked big ones were red, next were orange, then blue, and then green. I just sort of put them into sort of groups-ish in terms of order of importance, but no, not really. It's pretty arbitrary. Um, does anyone know what I get when I do the past papers? Those of you who seen my exam guide videos, what do I get when I do a closed book past paper? I don't get 100%. I can tell you that for sure. I get it anywhere between, I'd say my mean is probably like mid 80s. I rarely get 90%. And occasionally I get in the 70s. Yeah, 80 to 85 would be where my mean or modal mark would be. So you're never going to get 100. So if you're waiting to start past papers until your content knowledge is like that awesome, that you don't do past papers until you feel ready, you will never be ready. You'll, you will not do past papers until you absolutely have to, it may half term, and then it's too late because it takes loads of practice. These problems are real. Understanding what the question is actually asking you, you could have all the content knowledge in the world, but understanding what the question is actually asking you is a mega skill that takes months to do it really well or years if you're in my case that's how i've done it just i've done loads and loads and loads and loads for years and years and years and years you don't have years but you do have months so to understand that so what can you do you need to start past papers before christmas start and you might say well i've not finished the a level i can't possibly start a past paper yet but all of the as papers you can use the tt revision method now if you don't know there's any give me a yes or a no if you know what the TT revision method is. So just to give me some idea of whether it's worth giving a one minute explanation of that, just a yes or a no to whether you know the TT revision method. Kirsten, no, Ella, no. Okay, well, the one thing I'm gonna just chuck that link back in because all the full information is in the exam guide, which is part of the free trial. So do the jump in the free trial and you'll get all the videos that coach you through it from me and some practices and some examples. Um, Okay, those of you that do, Scotty, Megan. Um, okay, so what I would suggest is that you basically break the fear of doing past papers. It is scary and you don't want to do it because you don't want to get a bad mark because you want to be ready, but then you end up in this cycle. So what you need to do is start with the AS papers and treat it like a game. Just jump in there, have a crack at the papers, and they are training. It's like using stabilizers. You're just using them as training wheels to get yourself going to find where your errors are because most of your errors will come from poor technique, not understanding the question, 
and you'll end up learning lots that you didn't realize that you're learning, applying the mark schemes. Okay, so start past papers before Christmas. And if you're not ready for the A-level content, which you won't be, start on the AS papers, do a few rounds of the TT revision method, which is basically goes like this, in a nutshell. You do a paper in exam conditions. That bit's easy, you take a break. Then you mark it and you analyze every single place that you go where you lose a mark. So you don't record how many marks do you get. You, if a question is 12 marks and you get 10 out of 12, which would be excellent, then you'd get minus two. You record how many marks you lose. You start with the mindset, you start with 100%, they are yours. And every time you lose a mark, it's deducted from you. And then when you've marked and analyzed your paper, you go hunting for those marks that you've lost and you go figure out why. Well, did you not know the content or was it exam technique? They're the two major ones in biology. Occasionally you just make a calculation error and you, you, we call that an FFS. But basically it's content or exam technique. And then you can go away and improve those things. You do some revision on those things and then you repeat the same paper, the identical same paper, and you chart your improvement over time. Check out the exam guide, join the free trial. If you don't know what it is, it will change your A-level biology life. Okay, what's next on my thing here? How specific the mark schemes are was your next point. And that links me beautifully when I can find my mouse again into my next point here. I'm actually pretty good for time. Okay, know your key terms. This is, this is, you'll see in my videos, this is a screenshot from my video down here. This is, you, I mean, you're not going to be able to read it too fully. All these red bits here, 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 here. In fact, I can probably do it on my screen. So like DNA helicase, hydrogen bonds, complementary base pairing, DNA polymerase, phosphodiester, semi-conservative, these anti-parallel, these are the key terms that will get you the marks. So you will see that they're called key terms for a reason. They are essential. You could write a beautiful description of how an enzyme works, but if you don't say, the active site is complementary to the substrate and it forms an enzyme substrate complex, you won't get a single thing. No marks. You have to play the game. I can teach you the hoops that they want you to jump through. And that's all you've got to learn those hoops. And I, it kind of sucks to say that you've got to play the game, but it is one giant game. And we have to play it to the best of our ability, which means using the key terms and if you can do one thing when proofreading your answers, I do, I have an exam technique section in the exam guide, but it's called CARBS and the S of CARBS, it's an acronym, is self-check. And in self-check, your mindset is how many more key terms can I add to my answer? Don't try and think about if you've done it right or wrong, but how many extra key terms that are relevant can you crowbar into that answer? Because nine times out of 10, you can pick up an extra mark by just squeezing in a little bit of, key term goodness and enrich your answer with key terms. And that's what the mark scheme is looking for. If you could only write a paper in key terms, or you could only write a paper, not including any key terms, you will get more marks for just writing a stream of bullet points in key terms than you will for just writing as much many words as you want in the world ever, but not including any key terms. Okay. How did I do? Oh, I'm under half an hour. Boom. Okay, so who can remember what some of those takeaway points were? Okay, we'll go back to here. So much content. Okay, well, I'll also tell you, if you're interested, that depending on which exam board, there is a little bit of variation that the AS and A-level together combined is 250 approximately 8 to 10 minutes videos, which is around about 40 hours total. So I've converted 700, well, that's not a very good joining arrow. I've converted 700 pages of the textbook into most of the courses are less than 40 hours of video play. Okay, you're going to have to pause it, you're going to have to write notes, even if you do it double that, that's 80 hours. Can anyone, how many, we've got 12 months, we've got 50 weeks. That's less than, yeah, I mean, if we, if we look at this, we've got definitely, we've got 50 weeks, right? We've got 52 weeks. So, I mean, if you did roughly 10 hours a week, 
you could cover the entire content with me inside out back to front. Okay, so, so much content. It doesn't have to be that much. You just need to know which bits are relevant and do not use the textbooks to tell you that. They are full of information that you are not essential. It's nice to know, it's not need to know. So that they are not your best friend when it comes to learning the content that you must know. I don't know any other resources. The CGP revision guides are pretty good for that. In terms of book form, they're a bit childish, but in terms of the books, they're much more in line with what you have to know than the regular textbooks. Obviously my course is designed to teach you it in that way. Understand, understanding the questions. So this is start past papers early. In fact, for, for so much content, I'm gonna say, try the free trial because that is that will show you how much, do a topic with the free trial. And then when your free trial expires after seven days, do another topic with your textbook and then see how, what the time difference is. I just challenge you right now. It's gonna cost you absolutely nothing. I challenge you, do a topic with the textbook, do a topic with the course and see how much time it saves you. Anyone who uses the course, when you wanna give me like how much longer it takes to learn a topic with the textbook compared to using the course, if you are one of our subscribers, like like, just a rough, is it is it double, is it triple, but you, you make up your own numbers. Um, so this is, learn your key terms. In fact, let's put them in red. In my lessons, they're all in red because you have to know them. An application, this is because basically this is you, this is, this is all of it. So you have to know the content. So don't move on before you finished it. Oh, I'm in the wrong color again. before understanding, and you can ask for help. You can also pass papers. When should you start pass papers? Emily's saying four times longer to learn it from the textbook. 10 minutes from TT and a 30 minutes from a textbook, so it's three times longer. Yeah, you should start past papers and you can start with the AS ones until you're, um, until you're ready to challenge yourself with the A-level papers. Uh, start past papers before, well, before Christmas. Okay, I'm going to stop screen sharing. I'm going to come back and play some. If I've missed your question up until this point, I'm sorry, but you can repeat it to me. I'm going to chuck in. Oh, no, I'm not. I keep, I've got multiple monitors on the go. If you want to test out all the things that I'm saying to you. You can go try it out for a bit there. Okay, um, questions. Questions about moving into year 13 or questions about challenges of A-level biology or any other bits and pieces that you would like to know from me. Application is something your sixth don't go into detail on. Okay, so another great thing about application, that's a good, good point, Vinay. Um, this is all very well in, in, in theory, but it's really actually important in practice to finish your content in before Easter is when I'm going to say. So you guys, especially is going to be difficult for year, your, your year group of year 12s because you've probably not done as much work as you probably would have done had you been at school or college. But in order to see those links and to be able to apply it, to understand that food web in that sort of three dimensional interlinking lacing of topics together, you kind of have to do it all once and then turn around and then look back at all the stuff you've done so far before you can start piecing it together. So it's really, and that takes time. You can't just like instantly be, oh, I can see all the dots and join it all together. It doesn't work like that. So you need at least a month or two to do that joining and that application. So finishing the content. And if your teachers are not going to finish the content with you because of coronavirus, they've got delayed because of 
they haven't planned to finish the content. Some teachers don't plan to finish the content. And because teaching the content and finishing it all in time is a challenge in biology because there is so much content, then do me a favor, do yourself a favor and use a resource, be that a textbook, be that us at Taylor Tutors or whatever works for you to complete at least a first go at all of the content by Easter. Because you need from Easter until the end of the, until your exams, which is this day, what's, what's today, sh what should have happened today? <laughs> Anyone know that? I should have started with this. So maybe why will the year 13s aren't here? They're all celebrating. Today should have been biology paper one, A level. So literally one year today, give or take a week, you will be doing your exam. And you need a couple of months to join it all together. You just simply can't go through it all once and then expect to be able to link it all together. Think of something that you are really good at. Something that you might be a musical instrument or it might be a computer game, might be a sport, might be a card game, whatever. It takes lots of time that when you first learn the rules, knowing the rules isn't enough to see how all those sneaky tactics are that go together to make it work. It's the same with biology. One exposure to the content, even if you get each block as you move through, doesn't mean that you can tie it all up. So finishing the content by Easter, I'm gonna say is another top tip. Okay. Um, yeah, and you can use TT to get ahead. I mean, we're there, we answer your questions. We, we support you throughout the course. You can obviously learn the content. You can get ahead of your class if your teachers are going too slow and you feel like you're not gonna finish in time. You can use it over the summer to patch up any gaps you've got. Plus you can obviously, if you get stuck at any point, just ask us questions. Tips for studying over the summer. I mean, first of all, I would say it's gonna be important to have a real break at some point, but that doesn't mean do nothing. That means pick your spots when you're going to work and try to give yourself some structure to, to do, let's say four to five hours a day when you're working so that you can have a break. If you just try and do a little bit always and you just don't try and take a break, then you're gonna be jaded. You're gonna be absolutely worn out. So I would say whilst term time is still on, then I would say knuckle down, get your head down, top up all your AS content to make it as tidy as it can be. Maybe try a couple of AS pass papers because if they don't give you an AS pass paper before you finish at the end of this year, what's the first thing you're doing when you go back in September? You're doing an AS paper for sure, 100%, unless your teachers don't really care to know where you're at. They will, whilst they're studying at home, some students will do absolutely nothing and their content knowledge is gonna go woo. Other students are going to be really motivated and they're going to go out like this. The first thing the teacher needs to do when you're, as soon as you're in the classroom is to figure out where you are at and they will give you a paper. So be prepared for that. And I would say do a pay AS paper yourself and then look at those topics. Use the TT revision method. Look at those topics that you, oh, actually, I don't remember any of that biodiversity stuff. Best go and top that up. Um, you can use my graph to show you which topics are really essential for second year topics. Um, so you could obviously make sure you're strong in proteins, enzymes, transport across membranes. And I think that's probably it, most of it for, for that. How many hours a week do you think you should be dedicate to go in biology to get top grades? Do you want that sort of, how do I, Ella, Yelena, is that Yelena? Um, do you want that like during normal school time? Like during normal life or during lockdown life? Because it kind of depends. I'd say during normality, you probably are going to do like four to five hours per week per subject. That's less than an hour a day. An hour a day per school day is probably great. It totally depends on where you're at in the grade boundaries, how much of a struggle. Some people kind of ish cruise through an A and some people have to bust their ass to get an A. 
Um, so it kind of depends on which category you're in and how much you have, how much work you have to do to get there. But get your content knowledge as tidy as it can be, and then start past papers early. I would say starting the TT revision method as early as you can is the biggest thing that you can do in terms of getting yourself those top grades because you can consistently consistently get those grades and you can see the improvement with our progress tracker quite easily. Um, what can you do if you do all three subjects? Yeah, so it, if you if you do all three subjects, biology, chemistry, maths, it, you don't have to buy three subjects individually. If you go to the pricing page, it depends if you're AS or if you're if you want year 12 content or year th I assume in your year 12 going into year 13. So you'll probably need the year 13 content. It's not three times 79. It's cheaper than that. So yes, there is a deal basically. How to, okay, so Zach, um, how to learn and remember specific cycles. I wonder if I can show you in here. Let me pull up um, the, let's go with respiration. These also exist in, so this is my content guide for respiration. This is the topic overview. So you can see the lessons that are in here. You've got the notes templates so that obviously that will help. This is all of the notes templates for all of these lessons. So you can join in and you can just print them out in one go and then do them that way. But I've also produced these extra documents on this page, which you can't see right now because it's popped up in a different browser. <laughs> Okay, so this is a template of the lesson, um, but with empty boxes, I call this a skeleton diagram. So this would be glucose. We start glycolysis with glucose, and then we add some ATP. So this ATP going to ADP. This matches my video, but it's empty. It's for active recall for you to use afterwards. So this is glucose 6-phosphate, and then we add more ATP, and this is hexose, uh, hexose bisphosphate, We've got six carbons, six carbons, six carbons, and this stage is called the phosphorylation stage. And then hexose <clears throat> bisphosphate splits into triosphosphate, which is then formed into pyruvate. So you can print these off for things like this, which are just detail rich, like just super detail-y. Basically, if you print 10 copies of that and you do you, you create like a perfect version using my notes so that you know that it's correct and that's your reference copy, but you don't want to make a mistake on your reference copy, otherwise you'll learn it wrong. But then you can basically do that once a day for a week and then once a week for a month and then once a month till your exam and you will have the respiration and the, bi the biochemistry, respiration and biodiversity is super detail-y and quite difficult to learn. It, it's not that mega volumes. Once you've got it, the questions are pretty easy. It's difficult to get your head, well, not even difficult conceptually to learn, just lots of detail to learn. But once you've got it, the questions are make a lot more sense. Um, okay, I think I've covered everything. I don't think I've got any outstanding questions. I've done 38 minutes. I wanted to be under 45, including questions. Um, as I said, if you've got any other um, any other questions for me, join the free trial. If you're not one of our subscribers, join the free trial. <clears throat> you get seven days to try out all the courses. Obviously, at the end of the seven days, you'll you'll see whether it works for you. You'll see how much time it's going to save you. If you're a year 12 student who's like, oh, I've really not done very much over the, the last couple of weeks and months, and I'm really worried about getting an AES test that's going to inform your predicted grades, use it for a month or two. The great thing about TT is that it's a monthly thing. You can do it for a month now. You can subscribe for until now, until your exams. You can do what you want. You can jump in, jump out as you wish. Um, try it out. And if you, uh, <clears throat> yeah, if you've got any questions, contact me inside the course, every single lesson. In fact, I can show you that because you, if you're new, you might not necessarily, I'll just pick, I'll show you that glycolysis lesson actually, because it will, I'll show you how it relates. <clears throat> But what I can do, probably, let's do this, do this, and then find zoom again because it's hidden, and then do this. Okay, so this is my template note, which is now a little bit too big. And then this is my lesson. I might just make this a little bit wider. And you can see here, this is a preview, but I'm just going to skip ahead. As many clues. 
Um, and you can see how this structure of this note exactly matches my lesson here. And if you're stuck on this lesson, you can just ask me a question here. So if you do try out the free trial this week, ask me a question. Just say, hi, Rich, I'm trying it out. I saw you on YouTube. Um, just even if you just say hello, you can say, hi, Rich. But one thing, oh, that's not, I like to. Um, you can post that to me here. When you post it, it will go to review. It won't be public until I approve it. So if you post it and it disappears, you can't see it anymore. It's okay. It will be there within 24 hours. I will have seen it and accepted it and sent you a reply. And what I'm doing quite a lot of right now is sending video replies. Um, I'm just playing around with some different formats and different stuff. So in summary, what are the takeaway points. I'm going to ask that as an open question to you. What are the takeaway points, your biggest learnings, most valued learnings from the last 40 minutes? Biology examulance. Um, what, you, what year are you in, Zach? I should know that. Are you your current year 12 or current year 13? For my live classes each week, I'm doing a Monday check-in, which sort of involves catching up with the students and keeping them on track with the bits of work that they're doing, as well as answering any drop-in questions. So I do that on a Monday at two o'clock. And then there's a private session on Thursday afternoons where you can book a session one-on-one -on -one with me to, if you've hit a roadblock with a question, it's like, I don't get why this question is asking me this or what I'm doing, then you can check in with me then. So year 13, we've just, so moving into the 2018s, I think we're moving into 2018 paper one cycle of the PTT revision method. Probably the final cycle, I think. Um, we've, we started with the specimens, paper one, paper two, paper three, then the uh, 2017s, paper one, paper two, paper three, and now we're rolling through the 18s. Key terms, content is a third. <laughs> Year 13 is hard, but don't move on from topics. If a topic is a problem, solve it then and there ask for help, try TT, look in your textbooks, reach out to your teachers, get a tutor, whatever that needs to be, because it's only going to get worse. If you just bucking it under the carpet, you'll trip over it later on. TT method, for sure, start past papers early. With my year 12s at the beginning of the first month, they're doing past paper questions already. Right, real, because if you just do topic by topic, you never get that linking. You can't get that application. It doesn't, you have to chuck yourself in at the deep end. You have to accept the fact you're not gonna know it all. You're gonna get three out of 12 on some questions. It feels horrible. I got three out of 12 on a question last week. It, it, that will happen. And there is no amount of preparation that you can do that will make it go away. You, you will have to just accept the fact that some questions you're not gonna do very well on, but on average over the paper, you can, and you can only get better by doing the practices and starting early. Okay, good stuff. The recording will be available. I don't know how long YouTube takes to process it. It'll be up there pretty soon. Um, ask me questions in the course. It was lovely hanging out with you and talking to someone that wasn't, well, I kind of have been talking to myself, but I've been pretending they've been there. See you all soon. If you're in my course, then Monday on the check-in, two o'clock. See you then.